part two of getting the oil cooler in the van. So yesterday I got rid of all the oil uh, and started getting things ready so that I could then focus on getting uh, the contraption in uh, the opening over here in, by the pillar. So it wasn't fitting. There's a bit of a metal bracket that holds um, this area over here. Uh, so I just had to cut away a little bit at the metal to make it fit. So now it fits. I was able to mark where these two screw mounting holes will go on the side. Uh, the fits good. So hopefully in the next bit, I'm able to mount it all there, uh, get it all ready, and then uh, get ready for routing of the hoses to the engine. All right, so now I'm mounting this other metal plate that's gonna seal the whole setup in, and then the air intake is gonna come through here. These little ones will then grab onto that wall. Inserting the wire harness into the controller. I'm gonna put this clamp, this bar here, so that the clamp, the houses will come up and over. Okay. There we go. Uh, the oil cooler is in place. I routed the hoses. The sandwich adapter is in place, but I haven't been able to torque it down. Uh, the sandwich adapter, I'll try to show it. It's really hard to get to the piece that connects the sandwich adapter in. It has some, it has some curves inside of the sandwich adapter. So a regular socket is not getting in there and I'm supposed to torque it to a certain amount. The glow shift was a lot easier to do. The actual sandwich adapter had space for you to get something in there to get it tight. But the sandwich adapter for the oil cooler, because it has a spring and a bunch of other stuff in there, uh, that's in there so that it doesn't send, it doesn't send everything through to the oil cooler when the engine is still cold. I think the idea is once it gets to a certain temperature, the valve opens and then sends the oil to get cooled down uh, so that it doesn't hurt the engine. And then once it gets too warm, then it starts cooling it down. So what I did is I got a long 20, 26 millimeter socket that I'm just gonna uh, trim down so that hopefully there's enough space for me to fit in there and be able to torque this back. But uh, everything is in place other than that. And the last part of the install is going to be the relocation of this, which is the low pressure uh, sensor that usually goes between the push rods uh, near cylinder three and four. Everything was torqued to spec, everything was ready. Uh, and then as I try to fit the filter on the adapter, uh, because of the angle that these two fittings are at, the nut that holds the hose into this fitting hits the filter. So now I have to take everything out, move this fitting so that it's slightly over on the side and hopefully there's enough clearance for the filter to go in. So this fitting here was uh, interfering with the filter. So I'm hoping that although it asked for them to be at around this angle, I'm hoping that if I move it a little bit slightly over, then the circumference of the filter will not interfere with this edge and it'll let the filter go on. It looks like I will now have the clearance I need for the filter because of both of them being at the other angle, that left fitting was hitting the filter. And this is what I ended up having to do to the socket so that it could fit. These walls over here just didn't allow for a regular socket to fit, so it had to be as thin as possible to fit in there and be able to spin. Filters in, sandwich adapters in, and the two hoses are tightened down. Now I need to make sure that routing works for these. Okay, so I just finished routing Ugh, the hoses. They come off of the adapter down there. Then they go into the clamp right in there. Come around and then into the oil cooler. Modified and cut off the end of the intake, so now it can be attached to this hose, like so. 
and this flexible hose will go over to that side pillar. Everything's installed down there. Hoses are run through. That's the clamp they provide. And then I ran it here, zip tied things down. That's going into the oil cooler. The air intake tube is now put together. It snorkels through and goes into the pillar. Um, control module is now all hooked up and wired up. It's a new day, so the oil cooler is installed. The hoses have been run through. I have uh, zip tied them down for now. Everything's been tightened down. Um, the air intake hose has been routed through and I did the wiring last night. So pretty much everything in the oil cooler is now on. The last thing I need to do before I can fill everything up with oil is to install the relocation for the oil pressure sensor. Uh, and then once that's done, I believe it's wrapped up. I can put some oil, prime the system, then run it, make sure there's no leaks. And if there's no leaks and everything looks good, should be good to go. Okay, sensors all cleaned off and sprayed off. And it's coming out. Oof. All right. First part of the relocation. This goes on there. This relocation hose is gonna come through here and hang out up here somewhere. I think around here. Let's go take a look. Nothing seems to be dripping anywhere. So the install is complete and it wasn't without its own catastrophe at the end. Uh, after I started doing the testing, it looked pretty good. There were no leaks anywhere until after I tested it for a little bit longer when I realized that there was a trickle of oil coming out from uh, where the sensor used to be between the push rods of uh, cylinder three and four. When I was tightening uh, the relocation adapter, I, it felt like it wasn't really sitting in well. So when I took it out to clean things up and make sure that the crush washer was making a good seal, it was just not tightening down enough because it had stripped. Now, I don't know if I had done the damage myself or if it was maybe done by a previous owner when they changed that uh, sensor. When it comes to tightening things on the block, I'm always as careful as I can be about stuff like that. And it just, it always felt like I didn't want to over tighten. So, at first, I thought maybe it was just not tight enough. It was supposed to get to around 10 foot pounds and I couldn't even get to that. It just kept going. And then when I pulled it out, it had stripped completely and I didn't film almost anything at this part just because it was so, so stressful. I wasn't going to take everything apart. So what I did is I got a re-sleeving kit. First, I cleaned out as much as I could of the strip bits uh, and then I did everything very, very slowly by hand. It took me several days because I just did a little bit at a time, a little bit of time. Uh, I took my time and I used a ton of grease, I'd say over a hundred Q-tips, just every little bit, I'd go in there with tons of grease and just pull as many of those little shards out. I think I cleaned as well as I could. And then uh, I drained the oil, flushed it a couple of times. Hopefully I got everything out of it, the new sleeve, looks awesome and i was able to put in the adapter torque at the spec stayed in place uh and then the last thing i'll mention uh with the relocation i was going to try to put all three sensors on there low oil pressure uh oil temperature and um oil pressure overall uh but with the relocation it really is does not seem to be a good idea to have the temperature there it's so removed so what i did for the temperature is i got from go westy their uh oil pressure relief plug 
that it comes with its own uh, port. So you can put a temperature sender there. From what I've read, it's not the optimal place to get temperature, but at least you can get an idea of what's going on there. So after that, everything was tightened, everything was wrapped up. So far, so good. I've taken it now on a couple of test drives. Everything seems to be holding out well. I hope that was helpful. This video is more of my learning experience as I install the kit, not a how to install it. And it just shows all the hurdles that I went through to try to do something like this. Uh, maybe it'll help others that are thinking of doing something similar on things they might look out for uh, or things to keep in mind as they put these things together. And to always leave extra time, uh, days, weeks, if you need it for these projects, because uh, they're going to end up taking a lot longer than you expect, unless you are a pro and you know exactly what you're doing. In that case, I can see this taking very little time. But for someone like me that's just learning along the way and making mistakes as well, it takes a lot longer. But it's fantastic, fantastic experience to then have the engine come to life and and still want to hang around, even if I'm mistreating it this way. So I hope that was helpful. Subscribe if you'd like. I'm always trying to put these videos out. As always, Lorne Ekipser, thank you for watching and see you next time.